Hi there, Dan here with Gardenstead, and today we are in beautiful Muskoka to chat with Laura Thomas of Hidden Habitat. So Laura and her team actually design gardens that support wildlife, which is pretty awesome. So let's go meet Laura and find out more. So can you tell us a little bit about Hidden Habitat and what you're doing here? For sure, so um, Hidden Habitat, we're a native plant nursery. So we sell plants mostly just native to Ontario. Um, and then we also do garden installations. So we do native plant gardens, wildlife gardens. Um, we do landscape design and a little bit of maintenance and consultations as well. So why is this work so important right now? We're losing, unfortunately, a lot of species like songbirds, um, a lot of different insects. The World Wildlife Federation found that like since like 2014 we were losing like half of um, all of the species that they were monitoring. So we'll, we're kind of needing to support them um, a lot more and provide habitat for them and places for them to find food and refuge and that kind of thing and the reality is is that like a lot of like public spaces and parks and refuges aren't really enough anymore so it kind of relies on us um, to kind of create that habitat for them. So I've heard of this uh, thing called the food web. Can you, can you talk to me about that? <laughs> you know, a caterpillar will eat a plant, and then a songbird will eat a caterpillar, um, and then something will eat that songbird, say like a hawk, and that essentially is the food web, is that as we move up, things are gonna eat things, and then um, it kind of comes full circle. You know, that's kind of why plants are so important in supporting wildlife, um, is that connection that we need to start kind of with the foundation um, and then move kind of up the up the food web. Um, are native plants more ideal in supporting wildlife? They are and that just because they have this shared history so they've co-evolved with each other um, over you know thousands of years. As the plants are evolving those adaptations to be yucky to everything um, there's species like the monarch caterpillar that are evolving ways to be able to eat it you know, a monarch caterpillar only will eat milkweed. So it's not going to survive if there's no milkweed. So the monarch caterpillar has an adaptation um, that it can take in that tox toxic sap and not be affected by it. And you see that in, um, in nature quite a bit, especially with like moths and butterflies when they're caterpillars, they need that host plant relationship. Um, so that's in a nutshell kind of why native plants are so important is because you're not gonna have that relationship with like a non-native plant. When we talk about supporting wildlife and native plants, a lot of attention is given on caterpillars. Um, and that's because caterpillars are like a very important food source for Almost everything, like a chickadee, can bring upwards of 500 caterpillars to their nest in just one day. So we need a lot of caterpillars. So make sure to come back and check out part two with Laura Thomas of Hidden Habitat on how and why to use native plants to support wildlife. Not just for wildlife and pollinators and so on, but also for humans uh, and the earth too. Thank you so much, Laura. Looking forward to learning more about native plants. Thanks, I'm looking forward to it too.